So welcome, ladies and gents, to my course on historical phonology. Let me start on a very personal note, first of all. When I was a young kid, 10 years old, just finishing grammar school, um, my parents had to decide for me what foreign language I would acquire. What would be my first foreign language? And funny enough, they decided against English. Why did they do that? I mean, the reason was simple. They said, I mean, the kid can't even spell German. How can he ever cope with the intricacies of English spelling? He will never learn it, no chance, and therefore he has to learn a language where words are actually pronounced the way they are spelled, and vice versa. And they sent me to Latin school. Okay, so my first foreign language was Latin because my parents said, I mean, so he can cope with that, he can't cope with English. I learned English later on, but yeah, I mean, I started with Latin. Never regretted it, by the way. Um, but here we go. Um, what they were referring to in their uh, layman fashion is, of course, right, that English spelling is awful and... Um, we have to explain that, and historical phonology will explain that. Um, so what is so awful about it? Let's have a look at it. Come on. Um, here we go. Um, look at some of these difficulties. Randomly chosen, randomly chosen. Yeah, there's the spelling. I was referring to that. Awkward spelling. Yeah? Take the word sign. I mean, when I first saw it as a young kid, I pronounced it sign. Of course I did. Yeah, sign. If you don't know, no chance you can figure it out. Um, irregular spellings, uh, things like that. Heed is fine. Yeah? We are used to the fact that E-A denotes a long vowel, a long E. But head or dread or death, some of that. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, so one grapheme, okay, um, in a way, <laughs> representing various different phonemes at times. Um, you have irregular verbs, for example, keep, kept, kept, meet, met, met, and others, uh, which were not so irregular a thousand years ago, uh, which only became irregular um, because of certain sound changes taking place in certain forms. Okay, So a sound change may take place in the participle, for example, and not in, I don't know, the infinitive or something like that. We'll come to those things. Um, funny plurals, very funny plurals. Yeah, mouse, mice, louse, lice, man and men, woman and women, um, things like that, um, and so on. I mean, loads of things which seem to be irregular, um, awkward, contradictory even. And um, these things, most of these things, almost all of these things, may be explained by regarding the history of English sounds and their development. Okay, um, and not only the sounds, but also the sounds in combination. We were sound combinations. We will talk about those. Okay, um, so uh, this lecture series will focus on sound changes which have produced apparent inconsistencies in modern English, and it will leave out those sound changes which have no repercussion or which have had no repercussion. Um, later on. Uh, there are loads of sound changes, uh, monophongizations, things like, or things which only occurred in Northern English or only in Southern English, or something like that, um, which uh, do not have any bearing on modern English, and I left those out. Um, this lecture will focus entirely on those sound changes which still bug us today because they left their traces in uh, contemporary, contemporary um, in congruencies or inconsistencies, if you like. Okay, um, so where exactly are these inconsistencies? And uh, um, I would like to have a more detailed look. I mean, look at that. Um, funny enough, this is an airport. Yeah? An airport um, uh, close to my hometown um, on the Dutch border. And the airport is called after the town where it is situated. It's called Weetze. Well, here we go, yeah, German. Um, 
you, 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 you can imagine what happened. I mean, when a friend of mine, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, wanted to visit me, I mean, he called me on the phone and said, I mean, Frank, can you pick me up from the airport? I said, of course I, I, I will pick you up. Um, I pick up at Düsseldorf. Now he says, no, I'm not flying into Düsseldorf. I fly into Wies. Wies. I didn't know what he was talking about at first. Took me some time to figure it out, okay? Um, but it's a long shot. I mean, look at that. I mean, the German pronunciation would be Weizer. Here we go, very Germanic, yeah, Weizer, all right? Um, English wheeze, yeah? And I'm just concerned with the vowel sound here. Forget about the consonants, yeah? But long E in German, Weizer, in English, E, wheeze. And this has to do with the fact that double E in English represents long E, usually. In German, long E. The Germans get it right this time. Okay, no, I mean, there's no right or wrong, but, I mean, um, all other European languages, or those that I know, would pronounce it something like ways, way, so, way, something like this. Uh, big Italian, Spanish, French, or any Scandinavian language, or Dutch, or what have you. Okay, only the English have an E here. Why is that the case? Okay. Um, we come to that later on. Um, and the other way around, I mean, just think about Europeans who see English for the first time. Now, I mean, this European doesn't exist, but think about, I mean, if there were a European, and I'm, I'm gendering here, a, a man, a, women know English, yeah? Uh, if, if, if there were somebody, a, a bloke, who um, never um, had any English, none whatsoever, and he saw English spelling for the first time, he pronounced it probably just something like that. Team. Yeah? and board for boot, okay, and say for C, because, I mean, he is used to other values of these graphemes, yeah, these vowel graphemes. The reason is, of course, why is that the case, um, is that in contrast to most other European languages, English vowel graphemes do not represent the values of Latin vowels. This is clear. When languages were first encoded in Europe, I mean, you used the Latin alphabet, and then, of course, you gave the graphemes the values they had in Latin. Okay, of course. Yeah. Uh, this is the case for most European languages. I mean, most European languages, to some extent, I mean, they still adhere yeah, to the Latin value of vowel graphemes. English doesn't. And that's the main problem. Okay, why is it? Wheeze, only in English. All others would be weeds. Okay. Um, even the capital of Italy, look at that. Yeah? The capital of Italy, case in point. Yeah? In Latin, Roma, monothon. Okay. In all other European languages, monothon. Yeah? German, Rom, uh, um, Italian, Roma, something like this. Yeah? Spanish, Rom. I mean, whatever. Uh, you can refer to most European languages. It would be a monothong. No, in English, it's a diphthong. Why is that? Yeah? Okay. They say Rome, or Rome in American English. <sighs> yeah. So, you see, I mean, the only language which does not represent the Latin sound, okay, is English. Okay, something has happened there, apparently. Okay, more examples of English oddities, okay, before we come to the main part. Um, one grapheme uh, denoting many, many phonemes. Uh, I think for the EA grapheme, it's, 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 it's seven altogether. I came up with five. All right, but here we are. I mean, if you have EA, -E uh, usually meal, long vowel, monothong. Fine. However, there is great A. There's head, e. There's heart, r. And there's bear, okay, yeah. All right, these are five altogether. Yeah. There are some others as well. But there you see, I mean, this is very, very peculiar for uh, the learner of English. It really is. Yeah. Sweat, wow. Okay, things like that. Or uh, look at double O spelling. Yeah, Mood would be the usual spelling, but there's good, short O. There is blood, yeah? central vowel. Hmm, how did that come about? Or uh, look at that, never thought of that. I know, but here, here we are. Why is it have, but was, a, 
are, a uh, are. Shouldn't be or have and was. By, by the way, it was. Was. Once. Was. Okay? Yeah. Was. Uh, was. Provided it was today. It's uh, very inconsistent. Or uh, uh, problem. Uh, butter. No? Central vowel. No problem here. And butcher. Well, most. I mean, uh, even I made this mistake uh, when I first came across the word butcher. But I said butcher. Well, you generalize, but it's not butcher, it's butcher. But why is it butter? Oh, well. Okay. Um, oh, this, this is terrible. Yeah? Looks, I mean, uh, they, they look like perfect rhymes, those two. And they once were. <laughs> That's a funny thing. Yeah? But today, though, and enough. I mean, you can't be further apart. You can't be further apart than that. And believe me, they once were perfect rhymes okay oh we come to those okay or here let's try the other way around yeah um having the phoneme e long e and how many graphemes there are for this one phoneme yeah evening free double e t e a yeah receive e i breathe i e police single e and even things like e o for people okay well, what happened here? Yeah. Change of vowels, even stem vowels. Yeah, man, men, full, fill, mouse, mice, child, children. Oh, here we are. Woman, women. You will be able to explain all these things, okay, once you went through this lecture, okay? Yes. Um, homophones, loads of homophones, yeah? Um, who were, which were all distinct once, okay? They were, yeah? Tail and tail, two different words. Well, they didn't sound alike. Mm. Six, seven hundred years ago. Okay. Heart, heart, or beach and beach, and climb and climb, here and here, flee and flee. There are loads of those in English. This is why English is so nice uh, to pun on. Okay. Loads of puns in Shakespeare and so on, because you have these homophones, which were produced by historical sound changes, which made them sound alike words that sounded very dissimilar before that. Um, um, just look it up. There are, there are hundreds of lists of homophones on the internet. I mean, if you like, have a look at those. I just came up with a few of them here. Okay, irregular verbs. I refer to those. Meet, met, met, lead, led, led, keep, kept, kept, feet, fed, fed, feel, felt, felt. I mean, um, they, are the pro uh, uh, they are produced by sound changes uh, as well. Oh, they were fairly regular ones. Okay, uh, not anymore. Um, what happened? We will see. Okay, um, all this may be explained by studying deve the development of English sounds over the last 1500 years. And this is what we'll do predominantly. I will go even further back yeah, at times, uh, even 6,000 years back. Okay, but predominantly we will be concerned with the last 1500 years because, I mean, these are the years um, where English existed, uh, has existed for 1,500 years, something like this. Um, therefore, um, I, I, I will finish off here by very briefly referring um, to the periods uh, of English during the last 1,500 years, um, uh, since I will use those denominations uh, later on. But they are approximations, please, give and take uh, years, sometimes even centuries, okay? They are approximations. Um, of course, there are very... There are many, many different ways of um, dating those periods. Yeah? Okay, but for us, it'll it will work fine like that. So from 500 to 1100, something like this, Old English, yeah? O E. Then from 1100 to 1500, Middle English, M E. Then 1500 to 1700, Early Modern English, yeah? E Mod E, whatever. However, um, I I will use this abbreviation here. And then from 1700 up to the present, modern English, okay, um, modern English, and um, these are the main periods. And then, of course, they can be further subdivided into late, middle, uh, and old, uh, early, or late, old English, something like that. I will do this um, if we have to, but uh, get these things uh, straight first of all. Okay, uh, so this by way of introduction, you know what this lecture is going to about. Explain 
things, explain things which do bug us today a lot. Okay, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, okay, we will start after that here.